Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Meat has never been cheaper. In the developed world, it's gone from a way of marking high days and holidays to an everyday staple. As countries get richer, their inhabitants demand more meat, but our love of meat comes at a price. Intensive agriculture consumes huge quantities of land and water, and, of course, there's the lives briefly lived of billions upon billions of factory-farmed animals. No wonder many big players in the tech world think that clean meat is the answer. It's real meat, but it's grown in a lab. No animal suffers or is killed as a result. It may sound far-fetched, but it's happening right now in California. Our technology editor, David Grossman, has been to one company hoping to create the meat of the future. Our relationship with meat is complex. Many of us love how it tastes, but try not to think too hard about how it reaches our plate. Of the cost in terms of the planet, animal suffering, and a whole lot more. Right now, raw meat in our kitchens is generally treated like toxic waste. You have to keep it in a different bag when you buy it. If it touches your counter, you're supposed to disinfect the counter. And the reason is because there is feces in the meat. And within that feces, you have intestinal pathogens, E. coli, salmonella, campylobacter. These are intestinal pathogens. And if we don't cook the crap out of our meat, literally, they can sicken us. Well, with queen meat, you don't need to worry so much about that because you're not growing intestines at all. You instead are growing just the muscle that we actually want. In San Francisco and Silicon Valley, there's a race going on. Some of the biggest players are investing in the search to make commercially viable clean meat. That is, meat that is grown in a bioreactor rather than on an animal. But is in every other way identical. Clean meat is real meat that is grown from animal cells rather than from animal slaughter. So right now, we have the capacity to take a sesame seed-sized biopsy from an animal. And inside of that tiny biopsy, there are millions of cells. And when you put those cells inside of a cultivator and make them think that they are still inside the animal's body, they do what they do best, which is grow into muscle. So this isn't an alternative to meat. It's not a substitute to meat. It is real meat, simply without the need to raise and slaughter animals. This is one of about half a dozen companies in the race to develop clean meat. They're called Just. They invited me in to see how they're doing, although there were parts of the operation I wasn't allowed to film. The first question I had is, if meat is so problematic, why not just try and give up altogether? More people are eating meat today than yesterday. So we talk about the plethora of plant-based restaurants that are popping up. Bullshit. More people are eating meat today than yesterday. So the challenge is, given that reality, it might not be a reality that people want to fully embrace, but it is important to understand that reality. How do we deal with it, right? Um, how do we deal with the idea that people will be eating meat, but you just need to figure out a way to enable them to eat in a better way? And, and I think meat is so connected to our identity. It's so a part of human culture that the idea that we can tell a poor person that wants to eat meat for the first time, that instead they should have a piece of veggie chicken, is unrealistic. One of the big challenges is finding the right liquid in which to grow the meat. It's this which provides the rapidly dividing cells with all the nutrients they need. That's what researcher Perendi Birdie is working on. Up to now, the only reliable growth medium has been something called fetal bovine serum. It's harvested from unborn calves and is both ethically and economically a non-starter for commercial clean meat production. So we're working on a lot of uh, different experiments to find ways to eliminate that serum. 
So to do that, we're harnessing the technology from our discovery platform to find different proteins that come from plants that can uh, replace the proteins that are in the FBS in that serum that comes from animals. And I think here at Just, we are very well positioned to do that because we have years of experience who have uh, analyzing and understanding proteins from plants because at the end of the day animals eat plants. Cows for example eat grass so the proteins are similar enough we just need to figure out um, the best ones that our cells are happiest with and, and, and grow naturally. In the basement of Just is a huge plant library. Hundreds of samples ready for testing to find the ones with the right nutrients in which meat can grow. One thing the researchers haven't yet solved is how to replicate the structure and texture of animal-grown meat. How to make a steak rather than just a pile of mince. It's difficult and we're not there yet. Um, I think the initial products you'll see will be things like hamburger or nuggets or pâtés. Um, but over time, the technology is out there for us to develop that structure. And we've done some interesting things internally that tell us we can get structure with different cell types. So there's plenty of work still to do. Much of the boring, repetitive testing at Just is done by robots. The clean meat industry is aware it has to tread carefully. Headlines about unnatural Frankenstein food could turn the public against it. However, supporters hit back that there's nothing natural about the way we currently produce meat. Think about the way that chickens are treated today. Most of the chicken meat that people eat comes from birds who were genetically manipulated to grow so big, so fast, that many of them have difficulty even taking more than a few steps before collapsing underneath their own weight. They lived inside of these overcrowded warehouses where they lived in their own feces, were pumped full of drugs like antibiotics, and when it comes time for them to slaughter, well, you probably don't want to hear about it. So when we consider just how unnatural, inhumane, and unsustainable our current methods of meat production are, all of a sudden, clean meat seems like a naturally preferable option. I'm going to make the best chicken nuggets ever. Wake up, wake up. Just has made a prototype clean meat product, chicken nuggets made from cells taken from a chicken still very much alive and well. They promise commercial sales will begin in a small way by the end of the year. We are all, it seems, going to have to get used to some familiar yet strange foods in the coming years. Let's I think in the beginning you do have to educate. You do have to say, here's what clean meat is. It's decoupling this idea of eating meat and eating an animal. Here's how we do it, transparently, openly, safely. Here's what conventional meat consumption is. Conventional meat consumption uh, isn't a, a nice cow uh, grazing a beautiful field uh, with a sunset with a smile on its face. We might want to believe that's conventional meat production. It's not. Um, and so you have a, an option here, which one you think aligns with your values the most, which one makes sense. Um, but I do think the, the difference of it, it's a cell line, it's nutrients to a cell line, it's a bioreactor. These terms are new. Um, and I think it's just a process of letting people into it. Um, Paul McCartney has a, a great quote, uh, if factory farms had glass walls, everyone would be a vegetarian. Um, I think clean meat facilities should have glass walls. There are many hurdles still to overcome, but moving away from relying on animals for meat has the potential to be an extraordinary step forward for our species and quite a few others as well. David Grossman there on clean meat.